Welcome to Zcast everyone, I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research and I'm here at Zenith Live 2025 which is Zscaler's user conference. I'm a CEO and founder, Jay Chaudhry. Uh, Jay, fantastic to have you on. Zscaler has been one of the most disruptive companies in the security space since you founded it. Uh, thrilled to have you. So a uh, quick intro on yourself before we get going. I'm CEO, founder and chairman of Zscaler. I started this company in 2008 with the notion that when applications are moving to the cloud, we are all becoming mobile. Where do we put all these firewalls and try to build castles and moats? So we said, let's turn this thing upside down. Let's not build any firewalls, try to build literally an exchange where right things talk to right things. That was the simple idea. Yeah, well, uh, given the uh, revenue trajectory and uh, stock price, you certainly have turned everything upside down. So uh, anyways, the, I wanted to, to touch base with you a little on the keynote. You had a great keynote this morning, I thought. It was a little bit different than a lot of the keynotes I've seen. A lot of vision in there. And one of the things you talked about was this concept of zero trust everywhere. <laughs> and zero trust, of course, has been a big industry buzzword for a while. Uh, but explain, first of all, what zero trust is and why we need it everywhere. So the big problem we have when cyber is that once a user connects to the network, gets on this, what we call the trusted network, then they move left and right, they find applications, then connect with them. Life is wonderful. But the bad guys, the infected machines, also get on the network, find your critical applications, encrypt them, ask for ransom. It's a problem. So putting people on the network, the main concept we have in network and security is being exploited by bad guys. The zero trust says, don't trust anyone. Give them this little trust to connect to an application at a time, never on the network. That's the notion we started out with. It, it started with users. The user is the weakest link. Mm -hmm. So we said, Rather than putting users on your corporate network, let's allow them access to only a few applications. That was the first phase of the Zscaler journey. We called it zero trust for users. Then the branches need to do the same thing. If you got 500 branches, they all connected to each other, either using traditional network or MPLS. It's a mesh network. A single infected machine in the branch can traverse, the malware can traverse and infect other things out there. So we got to have zero trust branch. Then workloads that are being built, they need the same thing. It's a natural journey, but customers had to get comfortable first with zero trust users. Now with over 50 million users, they've done a lot of that. Now they want to go to the next phase, the next phase. Then AI is coming, creating some yeah. bigger challenges. Hence, customers are now looking for more and more zero trust everywhere. Yeah, and I wanted to talk to you about AI because it certainly seems you've hit an inflection point. In fact, your last earnings call, that inflection point's pretty clear. Um, and so why zero trust everywhere now and how does that tie to what's going on with AI? Okay. So two factors. First of all, all the ransomware attacks that are happening, they're happening too often. And customers have realized that they have been throwing a lot of money on buying more and more firewalls and VPNs. It's not helping. That's one part. And the second part is AI. Now they're worried that with AI, a lot more dangerous things will happen. Once you start implementing zero trust, you limit access. You only allow access to certain party to certain parties. So an AI system can't be compromised that easily if it's part of zero trust. So AI is acting as like a catalyst. Maybe there's a third reason too. There is cost pressure on CIOs and CISOs. Oh, big time, yes. Big time. Yeah. If I can give you great cyber with zero trust and reduce costs by eliminating a lot of legacy products, customer becomes very happy and be, we're able to do all of that. Yeah, in fact, I talked to one of your customers this morning, uh, CEO Zora, and uh, mm -hmm. they just gone private and of course, to help meet the demands of the private equity firm. Yes. Uh, they brought you in and not only did he get better security, he saved a boatload of money as well. So uh, certainly a win-win there. They do. Yeah. And the beauty is we not just save money for security products, but networking too. Yeah. In the Zscaler world, every user 
no matter where they're sitting, you simply connect to the internet, you go through our exchange, and you access your applications. You don't have to go through these communication hubs, data centers, and the like. So even the cost of networking and networking gear goes down. Yeah, and uh, I, I thought on stage you did a good example of highlighting a couple of customers. Uh, you don't have to name them, but just uh, uh, give me an idea of the uh, magnitude of savings that we're talking about here. So this uh, telco company, you're looking at tens of millions of dollars. Generally about a third is coming from security side, two thirds is coming from networking and network equipment side. The other customer we talked about is healthcare company. These guys have a lot of saving. They are they have a traditional hub and scope, hundreds of branches yeah. out there. That's saving. Then the more exciting part for them is they want to open a lot more clinics out there. And these are clinics, lightweight, deployed, move on. So the sooner they deploy, the sooner they can start earnings uh, revenue. So it's not just cost savings, it's an opportunity to grow your business as well. Yeah, and so you have cost savings, you've got an opportunity to grow your business, and I think the third <coughs> leg of that stool is really happier users. I, um, I wrote a post on Forbes, uh, Jenna, you read, on the whole concept of the cafe-like experience, yeah, where sorry. people tend to work at home a certain way or in a cafe, and it's easy. It's easy. And then they go to the office and it's not so easy, <laughs> right? Or, or in different places you access things <coughs> differently. Yeah. And I've always said that, because uh, I'm a former IT pro myself, a CIO, mm -hmm. uh, whenever you create variability in the workflow yes. is when you get unhappy users. <laughs> and so sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. Yes. And, uh, and, and so, you know, that, uh, in fact, I think you were the first person I heard talk about the vision of the cafe-like experience. Why, why is that important today? Oh, because we want to work from anywhere and everywhere. And the cafe-like vision says, you simply get an internet connection. It could be broadband, could be 5G, could be Starlink. That's all you need. You connect to that connection, and there you go. In the old world, you will be building a mesh network. Yes. MPLS or SD-WAN. Which frankly is the most expensive way to build a network. And even SD-WAN, though it's better than traditional network, you still have route tables to manage. Yeah. Think of it, what does it take to manage your home network? Not a whole lot. No, not much. Imagine <laughs> you have 500 branches. If the overhead of managing those 500 branches becomes just like 500 homes. That's very powerful. That's what we bring to the table. Yeah, that's, in fact, that's one of the, I guess, uh, big misunderstandings or fallacies of SD-WAN is while it drove cost down from the ridiculous expenses it was, it didn't really change the operational model. Yes. And so all of the operational headaches you had with running your MPLS WAN, you uh, still have with SD-WAN. In fact, you so, could argue more. Right, but the other big thing it did not help is lateral threat movement. Right, yeah. A single infractor machine on SD-WAN can traverse, the malware can traverse the same way. I think SD-WAN was a good transitional technology to help reduce MPLS network cost. But it's transitional. Now it needs to give way to zero trust architecture where you get whatever network you want to get. No mesh networks needed, no route tables to mm -hmm. manage. Yeah, sim simpler is better, I guess. Yeah, I yeah. One of, one of the slides you put up in the keynote, which I thought was very effective, was mm -hmm. talking about the risks of AI, where I think we're all mm -hmm. very accustomed to understanding that you know, it can help us in finance or customer experience. Right. And, and uh, walk me through a couple of those threats and maybe things people don't understand <laughs> about AI right. that's uh, so causing exposure to risk. You're building a model. You train the model. What if bad guys can really do some data poisoning and feed bad data? Yes. Your results are wrong. Your stock recommendations are wrong. All the recommendations are wrong. So that's, how, that's why we must protect the models we're building ourselves for our company. Now, OpenAI need to worry about protecting ChatGPT. That's not my problem. <laughs> that's their problem. But the models I'm building under my control for my customers, my employees, I need to protect them. Yeah. Then there are other risks. 
prompt injections and other things. This acceptable use situation where the models can start giving you bad answers. Okay. <laughs> it could start recommending a, a competitor's product. That's not a good thing. Yeah, I think one of the fascinating opportunities ahead, while well, you said it's not your job to protect OpenAI, uh, ChatGPT, you can though. That's what's interesting about it. Is mm -hmm. and, and then, uh, uh, in fact, uh, I had lunch with one of your customers today, a bank, and I said, are you sure you don't have users taking, say, customer reports or right. customer statements, putting them in ChatGPT? Yes. And he goes, no, I don't know that's not mm -hmm. happening. Right. right, which is why so, he's reliant so heavily on you. Right, so we make sure the customer doesn't lose its data to ChatGPT. Yeah. Okay. Which is important. The point I made is ChatGPT or OpenAI has to worry about making sure people aren't injecting wrong data to make its answers wrong. Yeah, and so I think a fascinating opportunity for you, which mm -hmm. really could be massive, mm -hmm. is uh, this concept of zero trust everywhere mm -hmm. creates a security platform for the AI era. And yes. so if a customer wants to switch from Gemini mm -hmm. to ChatGPT to complexity, they can freely move about, but know that their data is secure. Absolutely. We, we actually do that today. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll do more enhancements for it. It's, yeah. it's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, and, um, uh, and, and obviously the other side of that coin is every application vendor, every SaaS company is creating their own agent. Exactly. And, um, and uh, those agents also carry a certain amount of risk as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you look at what our customers do, when they need to access any SaaS application, we are the policy engine to make sure the right party has access to right application, making sure they're not downloading all the customer data and the like. So an agent created by a customer support company or sales company can actually go through us. We are very natural, we are almost there. We, we are talking about partnership with these companies. So we can do the identity of these agents properly. Yeah, so they actually become part of that exchange. Exactly right, so. Yeah. Exactly so. Yeah, and so for customers who want to embrace this, um, uh, I think there's, uh, obviously every time you go through these technology changes, there's a lot of trepidation about making the change because it, uh, it is quite different. And um, uh, what's some advice you give customers? So if, they, if they're interested in it and they understand this legacy model of security, <coughs> Mm -hmm. probably isn't going to work for a whole. In <coughs> fact, one of your customers at a previous Xena said the reason he looked at Zscaler was because his security, no matter how much money he spent, uh, didn't work, wasn't working, and it wasn't ever going to work. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> and uh, so he, needed, he knew he needed to do something different. But what's, uh, what's some advice you give customers to help them <coughs> understand yeah. that this isn't as complicated a process as they right. think it is? So the slowness is generally because of inertia. The biggest thing is the mindset change. What we find is the leaders in IT and security who are progressive, who are forward thinkers, they embrace it, they drive it. Then they bring the team along. And then they don't really try to change everything overnight. They take phase one, show results pretty quickly, gain confidence, move on to phase two, phase three. Uh, you heard from this customer today what, 150,000 users mm -hmm. all rolled out in less than three months? Yeah, that's remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. It, it happens quite often out there. Yeah. It's a simple technology. The reason it happens so often is we have no dependence on the network to start with. We say, whatever network you have, you deploy a lightweight agent on your endpoint, we start working. Now then slowly they start doing local internet breakout, just simplifying the network. Things start getting faster and faster. But initial rollout, which starts giving them better cyber protection, better data protection, can be done in a matter of weeks without touching the network. All right, Jay, so just uh, uh, one, one last question here. So we talked a lot about how you help companies protect their AI. Mm -hmm. right? So if you look out into the future, how do you see AI changing your product and what you deliver to your customer? <clears throat> oh, it's changing big time. It's changing many aspects of product. Take data protection. We have been doing data classification using a number of techniques. Now, 
AI is actually helping do classification very nicely at a lightning speed. In threat detection, we, were, we have been doing threat detection as the traffic is flowing through us using a bunch of techniques. Generally, they take longer. You have to do it in a very smart way. Gen AI has the capability to do some of those threat detection mm -hmm. in a much faster fashion. So we are changing many of the products internally today, uh, dealing with the zero day threats we can figure out today. The other exciting thing my CISO is working on, we trained uh, our model against a whole bunch of data. Then, and with that, we used some 10,000 kill chains, attack kill chains. Now the model understands what they look like. Now it can predict a kill chain that hasn't happened so far and detect it and protect against it. That's very powerful. You know, I was reading uh, about this with my CISO, I was talking about it. Then I read an article. Scientists are trying to predict new material and the properties based on, by training the model, you said these molecules, these materials have this kind of properties. Hmm. So what could you, a lighter material, better strength, all those things. Imagine being able to predict new materials to be made. It's powerful. That's fascinating. So, yes. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Well, ZK, uh, uh -huh. enjoy our conversation. Uh -huh. It's always exciting to have good conversation with you. You're always thinking about what's mm -hmm. happening out there. All right. And uh, so thanks, Jay. And uh, so if I were to sum this up, uh, AI has disrupted pretty much every part of IT. Obviously, yes. the growth in GPUs has been well documented. It's changing networking, it's changed storage requirements, it's changed <coughs> applications. The last bastion to fall is security, and it seems this concept of zero trust ev everywhere mm -hmm. is the right security model for the AI era. Did they get that right? Absolutely. All right. Zero trust combined with AI, it's a powerful combination to protect not just against AI, but everything else out there. All right, and that's a scary world out there. So yes. on behalf of Jay Chaudhary, CEO, Chairman, and Founder of Zscanner, I'm Zia Scaravalo from ZK Richards, and thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on this episode of Zcast. Thanks, Jay.